What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to the Help More, Sell More podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Burlingame, here with my co-host, Joe Marcoux. Hey, Joe, what's I'm, going on? I was just going to say, I'm jazzed up today. Like, you're obviously jazzed up because you just jumped right in there. How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing awesome, man. I am absolutely doing awesome. I got to say, I'm, I'm, lo- I'm looking at that shirt, and it's just like, I really dig it. I really dig it. Yeah, if you guys are watching this on YouTube at some time in the future when I start a YouTube channel uh, for us, this is an autism angler shirt. It's actually a company I work with for my fishing channel, and uh, they raise you know money for autism awareness, but they also uh, donate like fishing tackle, rods, reels, all that, and run tournaments to benefit autism awareness. So yeah, they get yeah. kids out there that are on the spectrum, get them out there fishing, but yeah. Company I love, company that means a lot to me. My daughter is on the spectrum, so uh, yeah, I like wear my shirt proudly. But absolutely, yeah, to, I love it. Man. Today, today we've got a hell of a topic for you guys that somehow took until episode twenty-one to talk about. How is this possible? Because this is specifically what Joe and I do in our groups in the SOS Dojo. So we're yep. talking about role play. Role play. We, I mean, we've hit briefly, you know, touched on the subject of sharpening the axe, right? And we talked about how to become a better salesperson. There's an educational factor there, and you can improve yourself by working with coaches, etc. But one of the easiest ways and the best way of all, really, to sharpen that axe is practice. Actual and here's the problem. Live practice. And here's the problem. I know the moment that you guys heard role play. Because I've oh, no. done, I've been doing this for so long. This is exactly what went through your mind. Oh my God, role play sucks. Oh, it's the worst. It, everybody feels that way about role yep. play. And here's the problem that this is why you feel that way. Because you're doing it within a group at work. Or you're doing it with yep. your dog. You're doing it in front of the mirror with nobody correcting you. You're not, yeah. or you do it so infrequently that you don't get any value out of it. And yeah. so, yeah, role play sucks. That actually is, that's a great point, Joe. I just sorry to jump in there. Ah, do it, man. The, I want you to jump in. I do it to you all the time. I apologize. <laughs> that's true. Uh, <laughs> this is how we rock back and forth in our groups, you guys. But yeah, um, so the, you hit the infrequent thing right on the head. To me, think of it this way, you guys, because we deal with a lot of people in the fitness industry. Uh, I'll just throw a fitness example out there because that's also my background and experience. Um, if you worked out twice a month, how effective do you feel that would be at helping you get to your fitness goals? Extremely ineffective? Was that your answer? Because that's correct. If you role play once or twice a month or once or twice a blue moon every so often, right? Not gonna you're, not, you're not going to get anything out of it. If you role play with a mirror, you're role playing with yourself. So you only, you're limited to the knowledge that you possess in your own brain. You can't learn from anybody else. You can't hear how anybody else says it. And if you role play with your dog, your dog don't speak English, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is not yeah, Air Bud or whatever. You know, homeward Bound. That's what they were like speaking. And, 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 this, <laughs> and this, is, this is the other thing that, that people tend to forget the the role playing by yourself right i mean it's yeah. it's literally i mean you, man you're I'll, you're I'll having a monologue you're having a exactly. monologue and it's honestly you know like let's just it's mental masturbation is what it is you're doing it alone i don't know yeah. about you guys but sex is way better with more than one person <laughs> so so is role play and i'm hoping i'm getting your attention because I know, I know that Charles and effective. Jeff are laughing hysterically right now. It is though. It is. If yeah. you think about it, role play in and of itself is is the exercise like having a personal trainer with you when you're doing putting in the reps. You mm-hmm. know, for those of you that are in the fitness industry or, the, or the, that are co- in the coaching space, you know very well that you're going to get yeah. better results when somebody's going to hold you accountable. That is the, that's the secret sauce. Yeah. Well. That's the secret sauce that we want to talk about today, that if you're a manager of a business, if you're the owner of the business, you better be role playing with your team. If you're a solopreneur, you better go and find people that are going to help you hold yourself accountable because your yeah. sales operating, your, if you're optimizing your sales system, you're, you're going to have people help you get there faster. If you want to take a decade to get there, hey, keep staring it's in the mirror, you. do your best. Yeah, it, it, mental masturbation. Like a great like time. This. You guys can, you, you have to basically choose to live on the island by yourself. Like nobody is relegated to the island. 
you don't have to be out on the deserted island by yourself existing reinventing wheels and doing all that nonsense like why would you do that at this point in 2022 there is such a plethora of of coaching programs out there and and masterminds for example mastermind is yeah. simply like a role play setting for business like you, you don't only talk about sales but you role play other things you also are you have sounding boards you can bounce ideas off of each other how valuable is it joe when you've come up with an idea or, or you know how value has how valuable has it been in the past when you've come up with an idea you think it's rock solid you think it's great and you throw it to somebody <clears throat> and they rip it to shreds they poke holes all over it love how it how valuable is that to you it can hurt your ego and i i mean sure. i think everybody's been down that road myself included and i'll 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 share a little bit of that vulnerable vulnerability in this moment we both and have marbles in our mouth today it's like thank we're you. struggling yeah <laughs> it's like what the hell the <laughs> vulnerability of that moment though talk. man is so important because if you provide somebody hey i think this is a great idea and they can rip it to shreds before you execute yes. that's the beauty of a mastermind so and valuable. so some people go into the idea if you've never been in a mastermind some people think i've got all the ideas and i've got all the answers it's like listen you don't number it's one and number two success loves speed you're mm -hmm. going to get way faster with multiple horses pulling the cart as opposed to being an army of one. You start mm -hmm. off as one. We all start off with our idea, whether it's in the basement, in the garage, right? Like Edison started in the garage. Every mm -hmm. great leader started alone. And then as they started to grow, then they could scale. If you really want to be able to leapfrog a variety of steps, get into a mastermind and get in with people yep. that are smarter than you. The last thing that I would tell you is that if you're the if you're the smartest person in the room, you better change freaking rooms. Yeah, like it's one, there's always it's somebody smarter. To, it's one thing to just like have that every so often to just stroke the ego, right? But what's the value in having you know the ego taken care of, like? You can have the biggest ego in the room. You can like have the big old pride bubble, but like I hate to burst your balloon. It's not moving you forward. It's not advancing no you in entrepreneurship. It's not moving you closer to personal wealth and, yeah. and you know a, a valuable life, an enjoyable life. So if you want that, you need to start moving into bigger rooms with way smarter people than you. And that's why like masterminds exist. But at the same time, you know, coming back to the the sales focus that we have here on help more sell more it's like if you want to actually help more and sell more you can't go into every sales appointment and say like this is how spousal objections are handled it's only handled this way oh, oh i mean i closed 33 percent of them you know it's totally fine you could close more oh and my if god you could yeah. hear from the sounding board if you could hear from others mastermind style mastermind fashion then you can hear how other people handle it and you can learn new things and you can learn from people who have been you know doing sales like joe has been doing sales 10 years longer than i have maybe more right so i learned from him via his extra experience that he has and he's tried things that i've tried maybe that i'm still doing and he knows there's a better way so i should lean on that expertise and then i should sound it out i should try it try mm -hmm. it out in a mm -hmm. room live in a safe space which is what role playing in a room like the sos dojo is it's a safe space to mess up you try you try you try and yeah. eventually after practicing for so long you authenticate it you make it yourself your own yeah. and it sounds like you and that authentic sound is so magical when it comes to developing rapport and trust within your prospects your guests it's so much easier to make a sale that way Role play doesn't suck. Role play actually is one of the most effective ways and fun. And to, to be able to improve your sales game. And whether it's handling objections, whether it's, you know, Jeff's, you know, if you go to Burley Sales, you look at what Jeff is an expert in, which is why this, this cohesiveness that Jeff and I have works so well. The, the, the discovery process is so important. You got to role play that. And sometimes, and this is whether you're masterminding or you're in a community where you practice on a regular basis, the benefit of this is that sometimes you'll find that one golden nugget. Like I've paid for mm -hmm. programs where mm -hmm. I've gone for, you know, a, a, a workshop or I've been in a mastermind group and I, you know, I'm spending two days in a mastermind group on the monthly, for example, and I walk out with just one nugget, that yeah. one nugget can make, you know, it can add another six figures to my business. Well, yeah. to me, 
it's it's worth the you know it's worth the five or ten or twenty grand that I've paid in depending on which mastermind we're talking about. And so, like, keep an open mind. We don't we don't have all the answers because the customer avatar keeps changing. And what I mean by that is year after year they keep aging. And so and so do the the, the way that they consume media. So do the way that you know and and then things can happen like a pandemic where oh my god all of a sudden people's buying habits are changing. Yeah. And suddenly large companies as we are as we are recording this right now massive companies like Facebook aka Meta they just lost 25% on their stock. Now, just to give you guys an idea in terms of how important that is, because everybody's talking about, I want leads, I want leads. And one of the places that you could potentially find leads has been on Facebook. And we've talked about this in the past, is that, well, now that because of the privacy issues and with Apple and everything else and data, Web 3.0 is real. Meta is going to be a thing whether you like it or not. Ready Player mm-hmm. One, you're gonna people are gonna put a TV screen on yeah. the edge of their nose, which in and of itself <laughs> is bizarre. And yeah. then, and then on top of everything else, and I'm not suggesting that it's bad. It's just it is what it is. And then on top of everything else, we're still gonna have to communicate with these people, whether it's in the metaverse mm-hmm. or it's on a Zoom call or when this pandemic is officially behind us, live and in person. How are you gonna be able to do that effectively? Is practicing. A skill of dialogue. And mm-hmm. are you noticing something that I'm doing right now? Body language, moving your hands. <laughs> and asking questions. Yeah. And these are things that people don't practice. What they mm-hmm. do is they practice telling people what they have. Mm-hmm. And what Jeff and I want to reiterate again is how important is it, guys, to be able to relate with people so they want to buy from you as opposed to how important is it for you to have the feeling of, nah, you know what? I want to be, I just want to be a better sales person. People don't want to be sold. Do they want to buy? Hell yeah. Do you want them to buy from you? You got to roll play. play. (laughs) I sure hope so. If you're listening to this podcast. All right. So here's the big question. I know we just went on super rant tangent mode there, you guys, but here's the deal. I want you to ask yourself, do you practice? Do you just go through the motions? like show up, clock in, do the thing. Do you educate yourself or do you do nothing? And, and this is in terms of your ability to improve your selling skills, to sharpen the ax, to increase closing percentages, to meet sales goals, to exceed sales goals. Yeah. Are you doing any of those things? And by practice, of course, we mean role play. That's what we're talking about today. That's the main point of the episode. Um, going through the motions for me is like you learn the script and you show up and you do your sales appointments and you leave. You never try to educate yourself, try to move yourself forward, move the needle forward to improve yourself at all which a lot of salespeople do, a huge Mm. chunk of salespeople do. It's just a job to them. They're not caring about helping more. It's simply sell what I need to sell, not even sell more, meet quota, keep job, move on, right? Like why, Um, you know, have some fun with this or something. And then do you educate yourself? Because education and practice are two major pieces that can make you a better salesperson. Together, phenomenal, apart, not as much. Practice alone without education, without learning new methodologies to handling objections, for example, or improving your discovery process of your sale, uh, not as as valuable. Education alone without any practice, not as valuable. It's like, you know, you have to put that whatever you're learning into practice. You have to try those things. You can't just listen to an audible uh, audio book for sales and be like, oh, that's, you know, Zig Ziglar has some pretty cool closing techniques. Uh, Maybe I'll try that in the future. Yeah. And don't go and turn around and try it live with a client because that's where you're really like the cost of it. The risk is so high. It's so (laughs) incredible. So, you know, we, we, we have a segment that, that we call story time whenever we go into, into our podcast. And I want to share with you guys a story of the value of role play. And so the, the, the story goes like this. I was doing a role play exercise with a group from Boca Raton, Florida. This was within the last 12 months. And what was fantastic was one of the part-time salespeople was a retired diamond jewelry, like so diamond retailer. So this guy was living in the Midwest um, during his career. He sold his business, moved down to Florida, he and his wife. Name was Jerry. 
And Jerry was working part-time now at an electric bicycle store. Mm-hmm. And I'm training this store of retailers and age ranging from 19 years old to 68. Right. So now we've got, mm-hmm. you know, and, and there's, there's a guy who was, it was a retired airline pilot. Uh, the, the, he's part owner of the store. So he, he's putting some money in his son is the other owner of the store. And mm-hmm. then there's the retired retailer of jewelry. And this guy, Jerry was, he had left me a testimonial and he said, the power of role play was what made the difference in my jewelry business. Because you can find diamonds, you know, everywhere. Sure. It was it was the relationship building that made the difference, and the power of this was rep- on repeat. So here's this guy who knew how to sell jewelry and diamonds, and yet he didn't know how to quote unquote sell. He knew how to sell. He just didn't know what questions were appropriate in sure. this new industry that he was g- jumping into. He had a passion for it. He just needed to hone and sharpen the skill right like you say Mm -hmm. sharpen the axe put the polish Mm -hmm. right you gotta if you want to keep it clean you gotta polish it you gotta put up so we role played every session and within a very short period of time guess what happened sales increased and and what was beautiful about it and the real the benefit here of this story is this you had a 19 year old who was able to provide value to someone who was 68 so the 68 year old was learning some learning some things to say from the young guy and the young guy was learning some things to say from the veteran. So the benefit of role play is not just, you know, the the fact that you get to do things on repeat. There's a whole universe of growth here. And yeah. if you have an open mind to it, you could be the old person or you could be the young person. It doesn't matter. I mean, I, even in my own groups, there are sometimes people that will drop gold, like golden nuggets where it's like, and I'll praise people. It's like, Hey, that was awesome. That was awesome. That I really appreciate you sharing that. I'm writing that one down. We're going to practice that one again. Let's go. I love so. it. Yeah. A hundred percent. Super valuable, uh, to be in, you know, some sort of role play group. So I want to share with you guys two short stories here real quick. Uh, and I say two because I want, I also want to give you like the potentially negative aspect uh, that you can encounter if role play goes wrong. And my example comes from my first sales job selling personal training in gyms, which I've mentioned many times on the podcast. So you guys know the drill subcontracting company within a gym. Uh, I sell PT to people who've purchased a gym membership, but do not know that PT exists. So I'm 10 xing their cost, essentially. Uh, so going into role playing this, we had, uh, this company, the subcontracting company was spread across several States. So we would only meet via conference calls. Now at the time, zoom was not a thing. Skype was just barely a thing. This is 2010, nine, 10. So it's like zoom is not a big thing. Uh, having video conferences, not really an option. So we did phone conferences and Joe and I talk about this all the time, but uh, what percentage, you know, of communication is really effective there. You've got 7% your words, you've got 38% tone. tone and that's it. So you're at 45% capped on communication. You can't do body language. So yep. we were not training. It, it was literally like, if you guys do a fitness routine, if you're doing resistance training, it'd be like if you went to a, one of those cable machines where you like put the pin into the plates that you want to lift, but there's no pin. It's like, <laughs> like, there's no pin, yeah. you have no weights, you're literally just moving cables. So you're like, this is cool. And like, you're just going through the motions, you're not getting stronger. Because it, we didn't train the 55% of communication, which is body language. Yeah, Let the whole thing out. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So here's why it was bad. One, that. Two, over the phone, there were 30 people, 30 of my peers were on there. I'm brand new to sales. And they're like, all right, you and you role play. That was how it went literally. And this is how role play goes wrong. And this is going to be a key point in a second. This is not how you role play role play the whole script. Yeah. And this is, this is the job you guys, where I told you about, you remember the snowman drawing, this is the job that had the three page script. So oh we were God. all just repping the script. You have to be kidding me. No, 30 people on a call, two people go head to head. You try to close the other person. It was a 
competition. You right. go through the whole script, you make the pitch, person gives you a hard time objections, you try to handle the objections. Each role play was 20 minutes long, straight through, 20 minutes, and you try to close at the end. This was a horrible experience, and this was part of how I thought role play was bad. I hated role sure. play. Yeah, because I mean, that's not how you do it. Yeah. That's not it. And we're going to talk about how we do it in the SOS Dojo, you guys, here in a, in a few minutes. But I just wanted to give you an example of, like, if you're in your head going, like, role play sucks, it's probably because you have terrible partners or you're doing something like I just explained, where it's, like, this tough, uh, you know, just high risk, not feeling like a safe space. I didn't feel good about failing in that circumstance. I felt like belittled every time I did something wrong. I felt nervous as hell because I'm on the phone. I can't see anybody's faces. Everybody's line is muted. And then it's like, you and you go. And like, yeah. like oh, okay. What, Here we go. <laughs> role, play, role play when done correctly is, is what, if you look up the definition of sparring, Mm -hmm. Right. The idea of sparring is you have somebody who is at a different level than you are. And sparring isn't a fight. Right. right? Sparring in and of itself is supposed to be where you will learn from your quote unquote opponent. Yep. So you're growing both of you. So you and sparring can be done at half speed. Sparring can be done with someone who is coaching you. You know, you think of, of anybody who's a boxer, when they do sparring, they're not there to beat the crap out of their sparring partner. That's not the design. The design is the sparring partner is there to help the person grow their ability. That's that's the point. And so mm -hmm. you have different levels. Like if you think about it in martial arts studio, you've got people that are at a white belt, a yellow belt, a green belt, a brown belt, and a black belt. And then black belts have different levels as well. Well, you know what? Yeah. How do you grow that? You when when you, you yes, you can have strictly black belts training together, but when a black belt trains with a white or yellow belt, what happens to the white or yellow belt's ability? They grow quickly. Yeah. And the black belts the black belt isn't there to beat the shit out of the white belt or yellow they belt where they could. feel defeated. <laughs> Yeah. Like that's and this is this is another quick story. I've gone and helped so many different business owners, retailers, B two B people, where the business owners and managers, what they do is they beat the crap out of their staff, because what they do is they make it so that it's impossible for their staff to win, and that yeah. is the wrong approach. If you're doing role play, please listen to me, you guys. If you're doing role play, your goal is to actually reinforce the win, mm -hmm. because if it's like batting practice. Do you go to batting practice to consistently strike out? Because if you do, you're going to strike out when it's game time. If practice you go to batting practice out. and then you can go, hey, you know what? I can hit the curveball now. I can hit the curveball now. I can hit the curveball now. And it's all every time it's either a base hit or you're, you're hitting it over the fence. What do you think is going to happen during game time? You think sales is any different? No, it's, it's not. a skill. It's a skill. It is we, a skill. We, we've talked about it many, many times. So what do you Get do with a skill? You have to practice, but you have to do good yeah. practice. Like yeah. the practice that I just explained was bad practice. The conference right. call. That's horrible practice. Basically what that did, I'll give you kind of the, the real bad part of this, you guys. What it did is my first couple of years of selling, it created this, this terrible anxiety and nervous energy prior to each sales appointment. It made me afraid to sell. That's Why do you think did. so many people hate the idea of sales in the first place? Because they have been educated in that fashion. They've been Correct. like, nail the script, close the sale. And then they don't get the support that they need or deserve to improve their skill set so that they can close the sale and feel good about it. They feel bad if they do close the sale because they're using shady tactics. And if they don't hit their numbers, they get fired. This is why sales is like just... a. Uh, going down the, the, the freaking proverbial toilet. Like yeah. th that is what's <clears throat> happening to anytime anybody's like, I hate sales. Sales sucks. I don't want to be salesy. I don't want to, I don't want to be a robot. That. I don't want to be a robot. It's because your job experience has been like, here's your script, memorize it, do it exactly. I don't ever want to hear yeah. you deviate from said script and then close your damn sales or get out of here. It's, it's the, the Alec Baldwin in the room, uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. If you guys haven't yeah. seen that scene, go watch that. It's that. That's bad. Yeah. And, that is and, not how we want this to go. <laughs> and we're not we're not suggesting that having a script or a template is bad. Right. There's it, it's good to have a blueprint in the sense of the what is the desired outcome or what is the mm -hmm. direction of the map. 
However, just like Google Maps, for example, there's a variety of ways to get to your destination. And what mm -hmm. we want, that Jeff and I both truly believe in this, we, you've heard us use the word authentication. Here's the map. Here's a variety of different choose-your-own-adventure directions that you can take to get to the outcome. Because the outcome is what? Help more so you can sell more. Hey, listen, mm -hmm. if you don't want to go down the highway, no problem. You could take this exit and then That's ask a variety route. of different questions, and you're going to get to a different outcome. And yep. how do you practice to get these different places? Or how do you change up the map? you you got to role play it. you got to, oh, listen, with real I, I, dis <laughs> I discovered a secret route. How did you discover the secret route? Because somebody else showed you the way. Yeah, and it's learning from others. Practice. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. and you get to come up with these alternate routes and try them. And sometimes they have a dead end. Sometimes yep. they don't end up at the, the right location. And that's okay. That's why you practice in a safe space. But, you know, there, there are certain rules. So let's get into the key points here. Every episode, we try to focus on some key points so you guys can go home and take action. Now, number one, role play should be fun. Number two, role play should be a safe space. These are two extremely crucial, important elements that we focus on in the SOS Dojo. We say it every single dojo session. We bring them in. Today is about having fun, about trying new things, and it's about, you know, making mistakes. And, you and I'm going to share. Gotta, you got to understand that this is a safe space. We got yeah. this, right? We got this. Four words that I want everybody to remember. Yep. Role play to win. Yeah. Role play We're, to win. It's if you so go crucial. in with the it's if you go in, think of how you feel mm -hmm. when you win. If you have a staff member, if you have a team member that's new to the process and you want them to succeed, because if they succeed, so will you. Role play to win. If you go in with the idea that, hey, I'm gonna trip people up because I want to make sure they learn something, uh, I'm telling you what, they're gonna hate role play, they won't do it. And that's a role play to lose. And gonna you're not going to grow fired. your business. It's just <laughs> yeah. like you could take really good people mm -hmm. that have the right attitude and are willing to learn. And if you're I, I just recently spoke to one of the, 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 the best retailers that I've met. OK, like as mm -hmm. far as a salesperson. And he admitted to me, he said, you know what, Joe, the, the problem that I have is I'm a horrible teacher. And he, it, this was, this was great mm. because the discovery for yeah. him was that, cause he's a closer. Yeah. So he wants his team to close at all costs. And it's like, and so what he's doing is he, here's what I encounter. And then his team doesn't have his level of experience and they're messing up Yeah. with the, with the shift that we're providing for him. Suddenly it's like, I get it. It's I, I the attitude that I have towards role play isn't. I got to make them, I got to trip them. And because what it, it, it's What's when you're tripping up in front of other people, how do you feel? It's like, let me put dumb. it to you in perspective. Not only do you feel dumb, you feel deflated. Let's put it to you this way, guys. Imagine mm -hmm. a toddler or a baby that's just learning how to walk. What do you do with this. them? You hold their hands and you're helping them walk. No, nah, man, you just push them into the room. You're like, good luck, buddy. You yeah, throw them in the water. Even, you're like, even Learn worse. To swim. <laughs> Jeff, even worse, what some of these people and some of you who are listening might not might be doing, think of it, a little baby who's learning how to walk. Imagine walking up to it and then pushing it. <laughs> and like, like the visual is terrible. It's funny. It's not funny. So it's, a little person is trying is to walk. And what you do is you just keep pushing. Every time it stands up, you push the baby over. Eventually, guess what that baby's going to think? This sucks. Don't stand up. I'm going to crawl. Yep. And it'll, they'll never want to get up off their feet and never mind get the, like for those, imagine that you get a little baby, not only are you helping them walk, how fast can you get them to run? Yeah. Like that's the energy that role play to win can do. And it's a it, terrible it, visual, but you know what I mean with, by that, Jeff? Like the idea of oh, you're pushing the little baby over, it's horrible. And yet many people are doing that in their role play. And it's like, oh my God, you, you wonder why people think role play or sales sucks. Yeah. It, it's it's yeah that's such a great example i was thinking the same thing i was literally thinking of like how do you teach a kid to ride a bike you know yeah. just to be like figure it out you don't you know to teach him to swim you don't just throw him in the water this is like not 1943 you guys like we don't do that stuff anymore okay yeah. so you know because it wasn't effective it's just not i don't care who says it is it's not 
Like everybody should know that at this point. So the sink or swim methodology of role playing or sales or the Alec Baldwin, the leads don't suck, you suck. Like it's not, that is not effective coaching. That's lazy coaching. That's lazy leadership. That's terrible leadership. And I, I got to say this, this is a very important statement right here, because it sounds like we are beating the crap out of you guys. This is not a personal attack. If you're doing this, that's okay. I've done it. Joe, have you ever done that? Yeah, uh, like, yeah absolutely. I should make this super hard on them. I should try a trick. I've done that. I've definitely done that. Well, think I'll, of the quizzes know, in the dojo. I mean, we're always putting, you know, trick questions. There, in. there was a tough one yesterday that was like the word I or we. <laughs> it right. was the same sentence. Same sentence. And it was like, we want to be inclusive. So it should be we. And I almost tripped up on that one. Good point. The, the point, though, is, and don't get me wrong, I, you know, I love the way that Dan Pena says it, like, you're all a bunch of freaking snowflakes. And, you, you know, I, like, it's like, hey, I, I understand there's a level of toughness that has to be put into us in sales. And before you can develop, the, before you develop those calluses, you've got to get the basics down. Mm-hmm. And then in, in, if you can enjoy the process, then all of a sudden, your lifts, as it were, get incredible. And so mm-hmm. you you got to go in with the win. And there's a level of failure in role play that is okay. The thing is, is that you want to make sure that people keep coming back. Like you yeah. can go into a workout, for example, and quote unquote fail yep. it during your workout. Let's say it's you're, 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 you're looking to hit 12 reps and you only get to 10. Well, you still got 10 reps that were excellent right. and you know, you failed on rep 11. Well, in, celebrate the wins. And yeah, the role play is the same thing. So we're not suggesting that during good role play and coaching that you, you don't put in some obstacles in, in there so that people right. learn in the mistake. That's not what we're saying. We're saying that there's a process to be able to do it so that you can get better effectiveness so that ultimately you get better at sales because yeah. <laughs> we want you to help more people and we want you to make a lot of money so you have the freedom. So nothing wrong with making a lot of money. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, It's as simple as this. Make it difficult, not impossible. So like if you were the one facilitating the role play, make it difficult, not impossible. We should all expect going into a live sales appointment that you're going to encounter no or an objection at least five times. So in role play, it's perfectly fair to stack or layer one, two, three, four, up to five, say, objections before you give up the ghost and buy. Uh, yeah. In the scenario that there's a buyer and a seller, which is how we role play. So, you know, we're, we're going to talk about how we do that. Let's give you guys like an idea of, of how that works here in a second. But yeah, big important step there. Make it difficult, not impossible. Also, another big key point, don't let it go off the rails. And this happens <laughs> often when it's like you and your buddies role playing. So if you role play with a, a friend, a spouse, not a coworker, not a peer, there's a big difference in that, yes, they are a living, breathing person that can react and, and interact with you and provide somewhat of a challenge. But the chances of this going off the rails and turning into a goofball fest is like, you know, 100 percent, 100 percent, it's going to go off the rails. Exactly. So you're not going to have a very effective, let's say you, you time an hour for this, you, you block off an hour for this. You're going to have like 15 minutes of effective work. And I know this because I've done this. I've role played yep. with my buddies. And I'm like, mm, I need people I don't see every day that I have a good relationship with, but that want to challenge me. And they're more of like my peer in this space. See what I'm yep. saying, guys? So don't role play with your friends. It's not if you had, don't role play with your spouse. Jeff, it's, it's like this. If, if you have the opportunity to <laughs> role play in, in the context with, you know, your wife, right? In, in mm-hmm. like, hey, I want to practice sales training here. And <laughs> oh, she'd tell me re- to go to hell. <laughs> she'd well, be like, okay. no, we're not, but we're not you doing know, that. Like, and and it, it, it's different as opposed to imagine if you, you paid somebody to come yeah. into your place of business or you were paying someone. To, that person is going to hold you accountable. I, I come oh, back to the it. fitness example where if you're doing training with a personal trainer, the personal trainer isn't going to yap their ear off at you. They're going to tell Mm -hmm. you, pick it up, let's go. And they want you to win. And they're not going to tell you to, hey, lift these 150 pound dumbbells when, you know, your max lift is a 40 pound dumbbell. Like it just, you know, the picture and the sound don't match. And we see this often in role play where people don't have that level of experience. And and, and by the way, if you're a, a, a top producer, Anybody who's a top producer listening to this, you know what we're talking about because the top producers are getting trained. 
top producers yeah. are working with people that are holding them accountable. I using the golfing analogy, a guy like Tiger Woods, he's got coaches. Yeah. He's the best in the world. He's got coaches. The best of the best have coaches because they want to stay on top. And the so question is, do you? Why wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. That, I, I talk about this all the time. When I was selling PT, oftentimes people would be like, do I really need personal training? I'd be like, look, the top athletes, the fittest people on the planet have personal trainers, have coaches. Yeah. So so why why would rando Mr. Jones walking into the gym like not need a coach? Are you kidding me? Everybody, I need one. You need one. I Absolutely. have a sales coach. I do yeah. sales training. I do role play training all the time in the SOS dojo. I do it weekly. Yep. And if I'm doing that and I run a sales company, why would any random sales person not need a coach? That's, exactly. that's a ridiculous mindset to have. Like, I'm good. No, I'm fine. Like, of course you can get better. This is why masterminds exist. Why? Yeah. Because we're not okay with making just like a supplemental income. We're not okay with just making you know enough dollars to put bread on the table and keep a roof over our heads. We deserve to make the maximal amount of income. We we deserve an absurd amount of income. Yeah. So why wouldn't you try to be the dumbest person in the room for a little while, go to a mastermind and learn from people? Why wouldn't you role play with people who are at a much higher level of sales, uh, have a higher sales skill than you have, so that you can go back and just knock them dead in your own business? Yeah. It's ridiculous to think like, I don't need that. That's That's a ridiculous mindset. So I just want to put that out there. Now, to give you guys sort of sort of the idea here, the framework of how we do this within the SOS Dojo, so you can see if potentially this would be a good fit for you or if it would be worthwhile or valuable, is we literally have a block of time, one hour, in which we get a group of individuals, six to eight, for example, because the more uh, too, too many, you know, not as effective because not everybody gets to play. Too few, not as much energy. So our goal, our magic number range is like six to eight. Six to eight, and, yep. And the way it works is you're going to have a facilitator one person's gonna be like me or Joe or one of our black belts. And that person knows, you know, uh, you know, the, basically the, the script, what do we say? What do we do? And they know it well enough that they can apply. This is another key point I wanted to get to force corrections. So mm. what happens with live role play where it's okay to make mistakes, which is again, what we encourage that safe space. We got this in the dojo when we're all in that group, We'll have myself say, I'm facilitating, and Chaz and Joe are in my group. Then I will, for example, throw out an objection. I'll say, hey, Joe, I mean, this sounds good and all, man, but I got to go talk to my spouse before I get started. And then Joe being the seller in the scenario, I'm the buyer, he would come back and handle that objection. And the, in uh, the SOS Dojo, it's very simple. Acknowledge, ask a question. Yeah. We don't complicate things. And, you know, there's a lot more that goes into how to actually do that and facilitate it. And obviously it takes practice. That's why we do these group sessions on a weekly basis. But he would do that. He'd acknowledge, he'd ask a question. And, and it would sound like this, Jeff. I'll just say it. So, hey, you know what, Jeff? I really appreciate that you want to be a team player. When it comes to decision making like this, how do you and your wife come to a final decision in your household? And then I would respond back and I would say, well, uh, you know, Joe, it typically comes down to budget because I don't like to argue about finances with my wife. So, mm. you know, really, we got to look over that budget and ultimately see if this will fit in. OK, and then I could say so, you know, and then there's a variety of again, remember what the, the reference of the map, right? Where could we yep. go with this? And this is the beauty of it. We're going to give you options that you mm -hmm. can play with, such as, so Jeff, I really appreciate that you want to be a team player and speak with her. So when you do, what do you think she's specifically going to say? Or I could say, hey, you know what? I, I appreciate where you're coming from. So when it comes to the budget, are you suggesting that this is too expensive or is this more of an issue of affordability? And so we're, yeah, then there's, there's a variety of ways that we could come yep. to the outcome and like we could deep dive here. You guys understand what we're doing? It's the practice of being able to mm -hmm. figure out how can I authentically come to a place where I can understand where my prospect's head is at. Because mm -hmm. something's, the spousal objection is an example that we got to, everybody's got to practice it. And it's a big one. And mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you're going to close 100% of the people 100% of the time. We're not suggesting that. I can guarantee the following though, you will close significantly more often because you'll be able to create value based on the dialogue. Now, 
I want to throw something extra in here. Now imagine this, Joe, give me an opportunity for a course correction, if you would. So sure. go ahead and respond to that objection. So I can um, appreciate that uh, you, you uh, want hey, to Joe. be a team player. Yeah. Hey, Joe, real quick. We're going to play that back. I'm getting a lot of ums and uhs. So mm. let's think about it this way, right? we got a spousal objection. We know what to say. So what, what, are, what are we going for? What's like the end result that we're going for here, Joe? Well, I mean, obviously we need to have authority. So mm -hmm. I knew I, I have to stop stuttering. And then ultimately, I also want to understand what their actual objection is. Great. And okay. I'd, love, I'd love to maybe close the sale. I got to figure out if I can beforehand. So I'll, yeah. I'll try it again. Yep. All right. So let's play it back from the top. You know what you need to say. We got this. Let's go. Right. So that yeah. is a course correction, you guys. That would be a simple example of how that might go. Now, sometimes it's much more subtle. We had a, a group yesterday where uh, I believe it was Michelle, not to pick on Michelle, but like she had, you know, great conviction, was rolling through the, uh, the objection and the process, acknowledging, asking a question afterwards. And she would slip in just a little, the word, but, but. It, it snuck in there almost to the point of subtlety where you might not notice it. Like a, a less trained ear would not hear it. But Joe was like, Hey, I just heard like a little, but in there, let's try it again. Take butt out. Right. And yeah. that's what you get to do. Live role play course corrections happen like that, where we in a positive way the black belt in the room the one facilitating the role play is going to say hey you know what real quick pause joe we're going to roll back to the top here's what i'm hearing and sometimes we'll even go to the group and be like did you guys hear that did everybody hear that so this is yeah. where the group format is highly effective Helps because now everybody in the room everybody in the room sometimes i'll do this in my groups too i'll be like did er what did everybody hear yeah. how did that sound right what did and, we catch and you're engaged and yeah. you're engaged and, and the other thing that jeff talks and every, what Jeff is also hinting at here, and this is something that's really important with good role play, is there, there are aspects of the subconscious mind that pick up on things that you're probably not aware of. And when yeah. you have people with a level of expertise that can help you understand the psychology behind this, that's where your level of confidence goes up. That's where you stop going, uh, um, s stuttering. Yeah. looking for words you just know exactly where you're going to go and you can dialogue with people asking the right questions and getting the outcome that is so important in the sales process so again psychology subconscious mind and habits that you've probably developed over your lifetime we're helping to reframe them like the word but and never mind the stuff on body language if you're mm -hmm. watching this on YouTube right now, you could actually see hand gestures, eye movement, yeah. head tilting. These are things, 55% of the way that we communicate is body language, 38 is tone. Inflection, mm -hmm. are, you, are you always talking, when you talk to someone, are you always using an inflection upwards? You know, when I'm talking to someone, I can also be talking about a glass of water or something completely useless, and I'm always doing an upward inflection? It just sounds kind of weird. That's it's like, hey, dude. <laughs> it's also annoying. And it's also important to understand when to use a proper inflection. And we're yep. going to show you these subtleties that right. add to the probability of improving your sales. And the way we like to say it, or your money back. Like that's the, that's the big yeah. thing. Huge. So, all right, let, let's kind of wrap up on, on this note here. And then Joe is going to play with for you guys. Actually, Chaz is going to our, our wonderful producer here is going to play for you guys a testimonial in just a moment. But here's the thing, you guys, if you take away anything from this episode, we always have an action step. What's the big action that you want to take today? Number one, the first foremost thing that you can do that's easy and free, just role play with a peer. Find a yep. group of peers in your industry, preferably, that are willing to role play in a fun way. Get into a group format, no more than eight individuals. Have one person be the buyer, everybody else is the seller, and do it round robin style so everybody gets to participate. There you go. Yep. That's a free blueprint. You're welcome. Now, the better thing you can do is get somebody with the expertise, experience, training, development, and hundreds upon hundreds of manuals that they follow with and have a, a specific linear approach to improving that skill set over time hint hint the sos dojo so if you guys want to really experience one guess what we offer it for free so yep. hop into a free dojo session link will be in the description below you can also go to uh, sosdojo.com it's s-o-s-d-o-j-o 
com. Book that free session. Uh, it'll probably be like Joe, myself, or one of our wonderful black belts that actually like uh, go through that session with you. You'll be in there with our live part, like actual members of the dojo. Uh, and they've may have been in there for, you know, weeks upon weeks. We've got up to what's our highest week right now 83 80, 84. by the time that you're you're it's eight week 86 so we've got people that yeah. have been at this for over a year and a half and yeah. we've had people go from a six-figure business to a seven-figure business some yeah. people that are coaches that are doing five figures six figures multiple six figures and and then we've got sales professionals that they're making you know a good six-figure income to a really good six-figure income yeah. and our goal is to help people go beyond that that's exactly it. So if you guys want to experience that and see the value of it before you decide if it's a good fit for you, jump into a free dojo. I mean, that's what we do because we know it's valuable. Once yeah, you get have... in there, you do it, you'll love it. And um, you know what? Let's just for fun. Mm -hmm. One of my three favorite words just for fun. You guys have a listen to this example of a group mm -hmm. of people that have been in the dojo and only for a very short period of time. It was like seven weeks. Have a listen to the impact that it had for them. All right, Chaz, go ahead and cue that up. So there's there's an example of how impactful live training can be when you role play to win. When you hear somebody say, hey, within seven weeks, <laughs> I was in a mastermind where I paid $30,000 and in seven weeks I got more value. With, I mean, what more can we tell you? I mean, so in the benefit for you, come in and give it a shot absolutely free so that you could see the experience and, and live it for yourself. We want to help you. 100%. And hopefully at this point in the episode, you guys, uh, we, we got way more long winded than we thought we were going to, because obviously this is something that we're very passionate about. Like most of the topics we cover on this podcast, at this point in the episode, you should at least, at least understand role play, if it's not fun for you, is being done wrong. Role play should be fun, should be in a safe space, should be in a group format, should be a blast, you guys, and it should be highly effective at improving your skill set when it comes to selling, therefore sharpening that axe. Role play to win. Role, role play to play. win. Those are my role last four words. Win. All right, you guys, thank you so much for listening. If you like the podcast, of course, subscribe. And you can also drop us a five star review that helps us out a ton. Come join our free Facebook group. We'll drop tons of content in there. Eventually, we'll be going live with this thing uh, as well. So stay tuned for those efforts in the future as we get a YouTube going. Uh, again, it's help more sell more anywhere that you're looking for us you're going to find it under that name and then go check out a free dojo session we'd love to see you in there uh we know you'll have a blast we know it'll be effective for you no matter what week you drop into so we look forward to meeting you then all right Chaz, take us out we'll see you guys next time